Ginny Wijnaldum, Andy Robertson, Jordan Shakiri. In recent years, Liverpool have made somewhat of a transfer habit of signing players from relegated sides. I'm Guy Clark. This is the agenda here on the Blood Red channel as we look back on the Reds' previous signings from relegated sides, some of which have been more successful than others. Joining me to look back on such deals is our Blood Red writer, Matt Addison. Matt, how are you keeping? Yeah, very good, thanks. It's uh, an interesting topic to be talking about today. It's uh, something a little bit different, isn't it? Which is always good when we're between seasons. Yeah, it is. And we are sort of getting into that stage between seasons, seeing what is maybe going to be happening in the transfer window. Of course, Liverpool been linked heavily with Norwich City's Jamal Lewis. They've had that bid knocked back. So we thought it best with that story at the moment, with that deal at the moment, not really seeming to, to move all too far, to have a look back over... Some of the players Liverpool have signed from relegated side. I mentioned three right at the top there. And certainly during Jurgen Klopp's reign, it's been a, a trick that has certainly paid dividends for the Reds. Yeah, I think that's sort of the, the model, isn't it? You look for, for value in the market. And certainly if a club has got relegated, you'd think that they might be able to let players go a little bit cheaper. I know Zed and Shakiri had a, a release clause, but you know one or two of the others certainly haven't. And, I know at the time it didn't seem particularly like Gini Van Elden was a transfer bargain at what was it, 25 million or so, but certainly that's proven to be the case. So, yeah, it's, it's maybe not going to be quite the same with Jamal Lewis. There's no release clause or, or anything like that. Norwich are in a very strong bargaining position, but yeah, it's certainly one to, to watch out for. And it wouldn't surprise you if, if that deal got done and, and Liverpool can, as you say, replicate a transfer trick that they've used so many times over the last few years. Yeah, I think you can go back to even sort of 2015, Danny Ings arriving from Burnley. Of course, that one, different circumstances as well with his contract running up and that one being settled with a, a tribunal, uh, the transfer fee. But it is something that even dating back to Gerard Houllier's time in charge of Liverpool that has worked. Stefan Oncho arrived, I think it was summer of 1999. He arrived from Blackburn Rovers in a cut price deal. And of course, he was a player who went on to form a very successful partnership with Sammy Huppier at the heart of the, the Reds' defence. Yeah, I suppose it's easy to forget, isn't it, that this isn't something new for Liverpool. Obviously, that's what, nearly 20 years ago or, or so now. So, yeah, it's, it's one of those deals that at the time obviously made a lot of sense and, and certainly it, it proved to be the case. I mean, I'm not actually old enough to remember the reaction when that sort of signing took place, but I imagine there was probably a similar sort of reaction, albeit not with Twitter and, and social media, to say what happened when Liverpool signed someone like Van Alderman. You sort of find out later, you know, once they've sort of established themselves and proven themselves in this Liverpool team, just how important they can be. And, and certainly Stefan Honcho was, was one of those, an excellent centre-back. And as you say, established himself very, very firmly in what was a, a successful time for Liverpool in that period. So, yeah, look, it's, it's something that Liverpool have, have looked at before. It's, I suppose, for the same reason, really, as, as what it is now. Obviously, Liverpool don't have as much money as some of the top teams do. So it's, again, about looking for, for value. And certainly, Stefan Ancho proved to be excellent value for Liverpool. And you'd imagine that you know, we're, we're going to talk about one or two other sins who've, who've been just as good, if not better than him. Yeah, and I mean, it has been all, all departments of the team that Liverpool have looked to relegated sides to strengthen. And defensively, it would normally, and the point that we've spoken about even with Norwich City's Jamal Lewis, that normally relegated sides, you're not going to be looking at goalkeepers and defenders. But two other players who arrived, Chris Kirkland, maybe quite didn't hit the heights that were expected of him. I think that was 2001. And of course, probably the, the pin-up of all of these deals is Andy Robertson, that deal for just £8 million from Hull City. Yeah, I suppose Andy Robertson is, is the obvious one, the classic example, if you like. And I suppose it, it could almost work against Liverpool in terms of trying to get Jamal Lewis because the secret is out now. We've seen, you know, at the time, no one was really sure what would happen with Andy Robertson. As a, I assume it would have been the case with the likes of Stefan Ancho and, and others who, you know, have, have come between those two deals. So, yeah, I suppose Norwich will obviously mention that deal when they're in negotiations with Liverpool. They will say, well, look, we, we appreciate that it's a player who's got relegated, but you do have form with this. We've seen what Andy Robertson has done. And, you know, even if Liverpool almost had to overpay for one or two of these players now, you could even then argue that they've still overall got a transfer that is valuable in Andy Robertson. How much would he be valued at now? Certainly far more than, than £8 million. So, yeah, I suppose it, it could almost work against Liverpool in a sense, but at the same time, 
you know, Michael Edwards and, and Liverpool are not going to, to overpay. I think there will be a point at which they will walk away from this deal if the fee is not right. Um, obviously, the fact that they got Andy Robertson so cheap almost sort of points towards that. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens next with Jamal Lewis. They're certainly not going to get him as cheaply as Andy Robertson, but you know, there is the potential there for that to be equally as much of a bargain. Yeah, eight million pounds that deal, and amazing, really. I think it was three years ago now, but time does move on. And I suppose other managers, not just Jurgen Klopp, have done this. Mentioned the two that Gerard Hulia brought in, but also Rafa Benitez had a bit of success with it as well. I think it was back to back summers that Peter Crouch joined in 2005 and Jermaine Pennant the following summer. And two players, really, who maybe not sort of key players under. Rafa Benitez, but two players who did enjoy success whilst at Anfield, albeit maybe limited. Yeah, two sort of very good, solid footballers in in a Liverpool team at the time, which was obviously progressing under Rafa Benitez. Peter Crouch in particular was was very effective. I know it took him a long time to get that first goal, but actually he had a a very successful period at Liverpool. And I know since he's left and, and since he's retired, certainly he's spoken about how he wished He'd stayed at, at Liverpool longer and, and he sort of had the opportunity to do so, but, but wanted to go and play regular minutes elsewhere. So, yeah, I mean, you look at, the, at him, at Jermaine Pennant as well. I think there was obvious inconsistencies in his game, but, you know, at his best, he was an excellent footballer for Liverpool, played in the Champions League and, and lots and lots of big games for, for Liverpool at that time. And yeah, I suppose it, it's easy to, to sort of forget what happened with him at Liverpool because of what happened afterwards and the sort of decline that we saw of him. But yeah, certainly at the time, he was another one who, who was brought in for really a bargain fee and, and, and played a huge role for Liverpool at that time. So yeah, I suppose, it, it again, it underlines the point wherever you look, Liverpool have, have looked to relegated teams time and time again and there is a genuine reason for that. You know, we've seen... You know, the likes of Thiago Alcantara and, and so many big names linked with Liverpool. But historically, those sorts of players haven't necessarily been the ones that have had the most success at Liverpool. I think it's what, the anniversary, I think, 11 years since they splashed 20 million on Alberto Aquilani. And, you know, at the time, that was obviously a huge figure. That's the kind of figure that Norwich now want for, for Jamal Lewis, which just sort of shows how far the market has come between now and then, really. But... Uh, yeah, in, in terms of you know splashing out on, on big players, that isn't the way that Liverpool tend to do it. So, yeah, I suppose there will be some people who are slightly annoyed if Liverpool don't end up spending big this summer. But the evidence is there to, to suggest that that is the right approach to take. Yeah, and like with all transfers, when, when the paper gets signed, when the deal gets done, there is immediately people look at it, oh, is that a good deal? Is it a bad deal? And I think one deal that was looked on favourably at the time and obviously it wasn't long after FSG had arrived, was the deal that brought Charlie Adam from Blackpool to Liverpool. Of course, Andy Carroll was there. Charlie Adam had brilliant prowess from set pieces during his time at Blackpool. But this probably the one that really didn't work out. Where there have been so many hits, this one, I, I think, fair to say, goes down as a transfer miss, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Uh, I suppose Liverpool almost got drawn in on that occasion. It was obviously off the back of an exceptional season for Blackpool and obviously they ended up getting relegated but Charlie Adam was the the sort of big star in that side and I suppose it's a transfer that wouldn't necessarily happen now because you know we've seen obviously bigger and and probably more prominent players than Jamal Lewis you know even for for Norwich someone like Todd Cantwell or someone like that is probably almost a a bigger name and and a more exciting um, sort of enticing signing for for some of the Premier League clubs but that's not the one that Liverpool are going for they're going for a player who maybe isn't the most fashionable or or isn't the most wanted player in that team it's not you know obviously as well uh, Charlie Adam was not a data signing he was not somebody who they'd scouted extensively in the same way that they do now so yeah I suppose the the Charlie Adam deal was one that didn't quite work out for Liverpool. But again, you know, it, it was only, what, seven or eight million pounds that, that it cost to bring him in. He did OK at times for Liverpool. He, he was not, by all means, a, a dreadful signing from, from start to finish. Ultimately, of course, it, it didn't work. He didn't quite have the mobility or, or the speed and, and that sort of thing that you need to, uh, you know, to make it as a, a very top-level midfielder. But, you know, he, there was sort of, there was enough signs for Liverpool to spend what was a relatively small fee on him. I suppose he was almost a low risk signing. So, yeah, look, it's it's a different criteria that Liverpool look at now. Liverpool are, are in a completely different place to what they were then. 
but you'd imagine that you know mistakes like that won't happen too often. No, as you say, it, it was a low risk signing. I remember Sir Alex Ferguson saying that his, his set pieces and corners were worth ten million pound uh, alone, and obviously Liverpool got him for, for less than that. And as you say, he did show glimpses, but maybe quite didn't perform to the level. Liverpool were requiring during maybe a difficult time for the club as well but moving on to two more recent ones who play in I suppose similar positions and one may actually end up succeeding the other in the uh, the place in the Liverpool squad and those being Jordan Shakiri and Harvey Elliott. Harvey Elliott he gets on the list because Fulham of course were relegated the year Liverpool bought him albeit he wasn't a first team player for them but these two players obviously at the top end of the pitch Jordan Shakiri got on the uh, the relegation release clause you alluded to before and has shown glimpses and Harvey Elliott looks like a real prospect. Yeah, Zed and Shakiri, obviously that release clause, what was it, 13, 13 and a half million, something like that. Again, another completely low risk, almost no risk signing for Liverpool because, you know, whatever happened, they would have got that money back from someone. Obviously going into this summer, pre-coronavirus, they wanted sort of 28 to 30 million pounds for him. So, Know, to be able to to at least double, if not more, um, on that sort of price tag sort of shows really it was a no-brainer for Liverpool. And when you look at the sort of goals and the contributions, not necessarily this season, but certainly in the, the Champions League winning season that he made, he's more than proved his worth. And, and Harvey Elliott too, I'm pretty sure we, we still don't know exactly how much that fee is going to be for him. I don't think that's been set yet, but you know, going forward, Liverpool are, are going to have to pay a, a tribunal f- a fee similar to, to what they did with Danny Ings. But, you know, whatever that fee is, it, it's going to be an absolute steal because we've seen already at the age of just 17 or, or 16 when he made his debut for Liverpool, it's he's such a, a talented player. It just almost would have made no sense again not to, to go and get him. And I suppose he is a slightly different case in that he wasn't exactly a, a regular for Fulham during that Premier League season. But it is still technically a relegated signing and, and probably the best of, of the lot on that list once we look back on, on his career in you know 20 or, or however many years' time that is. Yeah, you mentioned Danny Ings there. He's a player who, of course, came in in 2015 and that was that tribunal fee. And I suppose he's the one maybe that Liverpool, I suppose, didn't maybe get to see the full package from during his time at Anfield due to the poor injuries he had. But he, he really does look like a player now. Of course, Liverpool did make a healthy healthy profit on him. But he does look like the kind of player now who really would fit the Jurgen Klopp system at Liverpool. Yeah, he would. Um, I suppose that the thing that Liverpool fans can sort of rest easy on with Danny Ings is that I don't think we'd have seen the form that has made him a PFA Player of the Year contender at Liverpool ever because he just wouldn't have been in the team as regularly. The team at Southampton is effectively built around giving him chances and, and giving him the ball at every opportunity. And you know, for him at, at Liverpool, that was never ever going to be the case. So, but we we knew how much of a good player he was. Liverpool was so desperate to bring him in. We then knew once Jurgen Klopp arrived how much he valued him. But you know, to to have so many months, what was it, twenty four, twenty five months of pretty much constant injuries. It just never, ever worked out. And you know, I'm delighted for him that it's worked at Southampton. But as I say, I don't think that would have ever realistically been able to have happened at Liverpool. So, you know, we, we've seen in, in some quarters, Liverpool have sort of almost Michael Edwards has, has taken a bit of stick for, for letting him go for the price that he did and, and things like that. But, you know, I think for, for both clubs, to, for Liverpool to get 20 million, for Danny Ings to go to Southampton and get regular minutes and you know, for, for Southampton to get a player who will get them so many goals each season, which at the very least this season has kept them up, you know, potentially next season they could be looking at Europe and things like that. I think it was just the right deal at the right time for Liverpool. And, you know, it was one that didn't quite work out, but it, it wasn't the fault of anyone. It was just injuries and, and circumstance made it that way. Yeah, certainly. And, and being a boyhood Southampton fan, I think he's got the, the best move he, he possibly could have had from Liverpool to them wearing the captain's armband and scoring goals for them. It's certainly been a, uh, a good fit for him down on the South Coast. Well, the final player we've got to talk about then arrived in 2016 from Newcastle United, arrived seemingly as an attacking midfield player. And, well, he's become a midfielder who can do just about anything. And I think probably rivals Andy Robertson. Robertson certainly takes the value, but in terms of the assets of the squad, Jorginho Wijnaldum certainly probably gives him blow for blow contender for being perhaps the best signing Liverpool have made from a relegated side. Yes, yeah, certainly. I think both of them are sort of in contention for that sort of best signing from a relegated side. I think both of them have 
progressed so much. Obviously, we knew Gino Wijnaldum was an excellent footballer. We saw that for, for Newcastle, but you know, the way that he's developed just tactically and, and the way that he plays now is completely almost the opposite of what he used to do for Newcastle. So I suppose it's almost been the biggest journey for him. I know Andy Robertson took a long time to settle. He had to work out how Liverpool played and, and stuff like that. But you know, for Gini Van Alden, it must have been at least as difficult to, to sort of adjust, if not more difficult, because you know he was obviously bought as an attacking midfielder, effectively turned into a, a defensive midfielder. He's played centre-back for Liverpool. He's played left. He's played right. So for him to, to have sort of played in all those positions, slotted in really, really comfortably all over the place, he's just made himself such an important part of the squad. And I suppose the concern with him is now less than 12 months left on his contract. No news on that. What's going to happen next? Liverpool certainly won't want to, to lose him. I think it'll be interesting to see you know, whether he feels he's done everything at Liverpool now. He's won the Champions League, he's won the Premier League. Maybe he would want to go and, and maybe experience a different league somewhere else. I don't know. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed he can obviously sign a, a new contract because to get somebody as good as Gino Wijnaldum for the fee that it would take, you know, it's going to be a huge amount of money, whether that's Thiago, whether that's someone else, I don't know. But you know, to be able to replace someone as good as Gino Wijnaldum it's really, really not going to be a cheap thing for Liverpool to do. No, certainly wouldn't be. And also, you mentioned played centre-back. He's also played up front for Liverpool, of course, as well. And what a player he has been for Liverpool, as have a number of those players they've signed from relegated sides. Then will Jamal Lewis join the list? We'll have to wait and see. Keep attuned to the Liverpool Echo website across the Blood Red channel. If you can give us a uh, rating, review, like or subscribe to the Blood Red channel, wherever it is, whether it's audio on demand or on the YouTube page, it is always more than appreciated. And of course, you can sign up to the LFC newsletter courtesy of the Liverpool Echo and get twice daily updates direct into your email inbox. From myself, Guy Clark, though, and Matt Addison alongside me here on the agenda on the Blood Red channel. Thanks for your time and company. It's bye for now. <laughs>